Good evening, Mr. Lockhart. Your first for the night. Alright, let's get the itty bitty bits and pieces out of here first. Micro repairs, Godfrey, Andrew. Uh, we need two of these USB C connectors. That's really all we need. I uh, suppose I. I'm gonna need a shunt. Yeah, we'll use that one. It's not critical, it's just so that I've got a bridge. From left to right, hey Tony, hey no, no, no money, that sounds about the, most of us, hey Yanko. Alright, so today I received my USB-C boards that were meant for the INA238, but I had a routing cock-up. That's entirely my own fault, it was not the fault of JLC or any other thing, it was just me, I was making the part for the INA um, MSOP, VSOP, whatever you want to call it and I clicked the wrong, I connected the wrong pins to the logic diagram and subsequently the routing's all fucked up but it's okay, they're actually still useful boards in many ways because you know you have on them you're going to have a serial interface to the PC, you've got a display that you could use, you've got power, you've got USB-C and you've got a um, you know you can always dead bug in a, another chip or something like that so you know it, it kind of has some uses I like to keep boards like this around because they can be used to make prototypes of other things you know, they just sort of act as a nice little holding base for some other ideas that you have which is exactly what we kind of did with this thing here so yeah there's two different like the yellow board here that's from the open board data capture keyboard thing and then this one here that's how like I'm oh that was from my USB A current meter so yeah so you know keeping some boards is often useful gives you a bit of a chance to start prototyping something before you get a, the real one turning up. The other thing I want to test on this anyway is that with this particular board I routed things so that the USB-C ports are on both on the same side whereas with the other ones I had I cheated and I put one on one side one on the other which means that you can get your routing you, they're just straight through routing but this time I went for both on the one side, so we'll see how that works out. I just want to test if my routing there is functional. Hey there, Defcon, Ineos, hey Kenny. And after we've done that, we've got a memory leakage bug that I've got to find. Which hopefully won't be too much drama, but you know, famous, famous last words. Oh, what the hell? I wasn't supposed to pick up that entire thing. But yeah, with this chip here, this is supposed to be the INA238. The sense lines I've got down here, but they're actually meant to be... I can't remember where, but they're not meant to be there. That's basically it. Uh, so that's a, that's a big fat screw up. But like I said, yeah, you still have... You can just ignore that whole section. And you've still got I2C, you've got an AVR, you've got a display, you've got a serial to USB converter. Yeah, it's a still a useful little project board. Anyway, we'll get to the point of what this is for and we're going to solder in these ones. The other boards, the ones that I've got coming in, which are the dual, they're still the INA219s, but they will be supporting both the formats as opposed to just the one or the other. So I'll be able to do either SO8 or SOT23. Yeah, can we just tack this down, please? 
Thank you. Ah, great. Microscope switch is not working. Please stand by. Actually, you know what? That should have worked. Let's try that again. It's definitely transmitting, but for some reason Open Broadcast is not receiving it. Uh, please stand by. back up. Hey there computer booter. Another busy day ahead for you. This is what I was asking about on your channel the other night or yesterday how it's a real pain in the backside how the um, solder balls up at the end of the you know bit of solder there quite the nuisance anyway we're switching over to the big tip now just have a small amount of flux in there I oh, just need to fix up something here Computer boot is going to appreciate this. There you go. Computer boot all fixed up. B blood. Oh, you got to go to the DMV. Oh well, you enjoy that. Let's stick some. Yeah. Everybody loves going to the DMV. Let's see, your father gave you his seventy-six two thousand two. What? 76, what, 1976? I don't know the 202 model. I used to have the um, 320, the E36 series. Oh, you son of a gun. I hate it when the solder drifts off to the wrong part of the when it falls in love with the tip rather than the body it's very offensive uh, Tony W, that was a yellow face whip like I said, they are, they are venomous but they're not dangerously venomous and they really do their absolute best to avoid human beings The only reason why the ones in today's video happened to get moderately close and came back is because, you know, they were feeling a bit frisky. <laughs> and so when you're feeling frisky, you do dumb stuff. Nah, that's good enough. Let's see, 88 BMW R with 100 RS. I was, um, I always wanted to get myself one of the K75s, but I never quite got around to it. 
but um, that was back before people really looked at BMW as any sort of serious, uh, what do you call it, racing motorcycle, but geez, the latest one that they've got, my goodness, that's a machine in a bit. Well, it looks good enough. I probably could just simply use, what do you call it, um, uh, brain work not, now I can't find my other, since I could just use paste, oh no, I kind of prefer to use, I think, where'd my other connector go? Magic. My dead name sake is playing silly buggers with me again. And I didn't even do anything with Debbie McGee. Uh, computer meter, this was meant to be one of the new USB-C current meters, but I screwed up on the routing of this because of a library part that I built. And so now I'm just simply testing to see that it will actually do USB-C pass-through. Because obviously without that, there's uh, not much point at all. So all I'm going to do is put the two USB-C connectors on, put the shunt on, and then see if it actually connects uh, connects something. An iPhone will be a good test. Don't you dare creep up there. Get down into the pit. There you go. Right beside the alcohol bottle. No, there's a shield. Oh, no, I found it was right next to something else. Naturally, I find it after I've taken another one out of the packet. Hey Rilla. Oh come on Death Bomb, it's not that bad. You get used to it, you know it. Oh frickin' hell, stop touching the soldering tip with the iron. Um, the solder with the iron tip. To be fair though, at these scales, it's pretty hard not to. And now I've run out of flux. The only upside, well I shouldn't say the only upside, the big upside of doing both connectors on the same side is that you don't have to put the power plane, you know, the uh, V-bus line through vias. Instead it's just simply, it's a planar flood fill either side with the shunt chip in between. Uh, Neil von Reaper. Shunt chip. I shouldn't call it a shunt chip, it's not a chip. It's a resistor. I'm just going to steal this one because we don't need this anymore. Uh, 
I mean, I've got a squillion of these 50 milliohm ships uh, resistors, but I don't really feel like getting up and going all the way over to where the boxes are to take one out. And for those wondering, yes, I do actually have proper Kelvin connection routing on those uh, pads. Not that it makes a significant difference at this 50 milliohm level, but yeah, it all helps. It's good practice. Alright, let's scrubby scrub it. Death palm, <laughs> if I do, and if I don't see that it is missing a shunt, then that's, that's definitely on me. Yeah, I don't think I'll be... This was the very first incarnation. This was simply when... Just testing to see if I could even tap into the USB-C line. And that's, yeah, the I2C bridge there. And then from that, we switched over to this contraption, which gave me the USB... Um, COM port version and the LCD so it's like version 1, version 2, version 3 and version screw up I mean obviously I've got this one here which is working just fine but yeah there's some adjustments that I wanted to make on this particular one such as I've got 3 mil holes in the boards that have been fixed up I have adjusted things so I've got four 3 mil holes there. It's going to make it easy for mounting onto pretty much anything. Alright, let's see if this works with the Ithonium. Disconnect that. Okay, we're going to use my own iPhone as a victim. That, let's get the USB-C to US uh, to Lightning connector. I really hope this doesn't kill my phone. Well, charge straight away. That's good. Yep. Okay, well, that works, at least on that side. And I found... Oh, wait, what was that? It's probably because I got the dodgy charge port on my iPhone. Let's try something else. Let's see. How mad can I go? What are you doing, bug? Bugger off. I think I've got one of them backwards. There we go. And as you can see, let's see. We are charging 1.3 amp. So yeah, it's definitely working. So basically it's going through this, into that, and it's all working. So at least I know the routing is great. So of course that is for that board. There's no guarantee that I didn't screw it up on the subsequent boards. In fact, it's almost guaranteed that I did. All right, so that's one problem solved for the day. Well, I shouldn't even say it's a problem solved. It was more a case of seeing if it worked. Okay. Now, we've got a memory leakage error in our valve, uh, 
USB-C meter software. So keyboard comes out. Tony, it's the USB-C port. There are only 12 pin variants, so they don't do the dual side correctly. And I genuinely do not feel like doing the uh, 24 pin or whatever version. No thanks, it's just a bit too much for me. Let's see, is there, what's going on here? Okay. That font is altogether a little bit too small for me. Pardon me. Ah, oh, go ram it. I think this new version of Vim actually lets me save the settings now. And this is not my preferred font either. I usually use Inconsolata or something, some, something like that. Ah, stop it. Let's just go find the bug. Or the memory leak, rather. Tony, yep, that's correct. Yeah, that's why I've got the Sharpie markings on the cable. Hey, Jessica Ryan. Alright, so... We'll jump to the buffer. We will do... Oh, wow, I already am running the damn debug build. Okay. Okay, so we'd run the hard grind. I always forget which what do I want. Pull this cable. Come on. There you go. Oh, it was on zero. That's why. Duh. Okay. Well, 
Uh, it was so slow when Veeam Valgrind. Okay, let's just make it jump around a little bit initially. And then we should, I suspect it's going to be a case of I'm not releasing the surface properly. Is when we added those four little extra bits of text. I suspect that's where it went wrong. Okay, quit. Is that I don't know why that just changed over to port two, that's a little weird. Okay, so we let it run for a little bit. Uh, let's see. Uh, so let's see, 763, 70, 77, 72. Okay. okay, so I'm going to guess the fact that there's a cluster of four here directly relates to the fact that we have four different points. Uh, let's see if I've got that source code up. Ah, uh, getting old sucks. So let's see, we want line 763. Yep, now I'm not freeing the surface. Let's have a look how I'm doing it before. Let's see, texture, texture two. Here we go, this is where I'm going wrong. I'm not destroying that texture. Oh, God damn you, 769. Now this is either going to cause everything to crash and die, or it's going to fix the leak. I think we fixed it. Although, what's this? 722. These ones aren't too, I think they're just, the f yeah, it's just the font loading. So I'm not too worried about that because that gets reclaimed on exit. It's not something that's gonna grow. This on the other hand is growing. So that's a problem. 722. Oh, okay. Well, that'll explain that. If 
Probably didn't need to create these second ones here, but at the time that I originally wrote this software system, I wasn't sure whether I could concurrently do this. Uh, let's see. So we actually don't need any of this. So it's either going to crash hard or it's going to work. No, what? 735. Stupid underscores. Okay. All right, yeah, we've cleared those issues now. So like 5, 12, and 5, 10. Font half, font small. This is all internal stuff that I can't do anything about. Yep, so I've done everything that I need to, as in I'm not responsible for any of these leaks now, so that's good to go. That's not going to happen. APR. And I should really change this back to the optimal build. No, oh, that's better. Not sure where my multimeter is gone. Hmm. I think the multimeter has decided to just dump its guts for some reason. Uh, I'm just going to clean up some windows here. Let's just verify that meter is actually working as opposed to pretending it's working and then we can try and see if we can fix something around here. Yeah, that's looking good to me. Um, Ian, it's a IKBC compact blue cherry. I'm not the greatest fan of um, Cherry Switch keyboards, but they're a hell of a lot cheaper than the ones that I really want. Because I actually really want the buckling spring ones, but um, yeah, yeah, IKVC CD87. It's a, yeah, it's a reasonable compact keyboard, but mechanical, it's semi-mechanical. It's sort of like a Clayton's mechanical keyboard in my opinion does a decent enough job but it's certainly not doesn't really hold a candle to a genuine buckling spring you really can tell the difference between cherry switch and buckling spring because with cherry switch you, know, you get you get one sort of click whereas with buckling spring you get this sort of 
pre-push back and then the buckle through and then you hear another click then you bottom out at least they are mechanical switches but yeah i'd say yeah it's not my favorite but it's better than a normal membrane keyboard for me I know there's people who much prefer membrane keyboards and no drama with that I'm not a fan of them okay what am I going to look at What's this one? Try attack this one again. 20 volts, 10 milliamp, one port failed, then the other failed. Oh, that's right, yeah. I, this particular business that sent me these jobs, all three of them would drive me insane. And I don't know whether the person did it to you know, make my life horrible or whether they genuinely thought I had to have a chance. Damn it the system went and did the screen blank again hey tony w let's see oh you wait notice the other night you had the ability to search substitute coding variables that you don't appear to have available now um not quite sure it the it could have been that it was i had a um how put it if you have a C tags file set up for your project, that helps. It lets you find things very quickly, you know, move up and down the tree. Maybe that's what you're thinking of. Yeah, being funny there, creature. Ha ha ha. Okay, I just noticed that we've got a few things missing here. Job data. Oh, crap. Face. Okay, we'll, we'll live with that. Bug finding, uh, memory leak findings already been done, creature. Where the hell's the heatsink for this? Great. Something else lost. Right, just plug this in, see what we've got. I'll try and remind ourselves. So what have we got? 5 volts, 20. 20 volts. 20. Yeah. That's not really what we want. That would tend to infer there's a short, perhaps, on the like, PV bus or something. But we're not getting any real pulsing, so it's not something that's going to show up on the infrared camera hey you need more you're up late can't sleep too hot too cold something else yeah I'm not too sure what to think about this yeah it's yeah 20 million from the hmm yeah, let's go have a look see what our PP bus is. Oh, damn it. I really need to get the multimeter running. When you start typing a variable name, you get steady reducing list of variables. Uh, that... I'm trying to think. Um, yeah, that would have been my C tags. I have it on active on some projects, but not on all projects. Sometimes I find it more of a nuisance than a help. Okay, here we are. have a look at the fat gut. I've been trying to get it down. It takes a lot of work. I've been doing painting tonight and yard work, chasing snakes. Okay, anyway, I've got to break free. Where are you? Yeah. Okay, do I have a spare port somewhere? I think I've got one spare port up on the PC. Normally I don't plug these things directly into the PC. You know, typically I go through hub only. Crotch shot coming up. Okay, there we go. 
Well, creature, I mean, it's only wobbling like... You got an 8 milliamp wobble there. You can see, because uh, the maximum's 29, minimum's 21. And I've knocked the camera. Hey, crocodile. Okay, what am I doing? Oh yeah, I want to see if my multimeter is fired up. Because I want to do things like checking the PP bus. USB naught. Okay. Huzzah, we are alive. Yeah, I generally don't like plugging directly into the PC with this sort of equipment, just in case something goes wrong. Hey, B dog. Okay, so we're gonna probe around, see what we can find. Probe up, probe down. There's a hair. It's a good start. Okay, let's switch over to voltage mode. <laughs> but I've got no wiggles on voltage. I mean, that's pretty rock steady, 30.056. I mean, that's not going anywhere. Is that a bug that just flew past the camera? I think a bug just flew past the... <laughs> Uh, it's not snakes, it's bugs. Why not? Let's have a look at this board and see if we can see anything visually, but I have my doubts. And we've got plenty of these wobbly, unwanted Okay, so we've got a fair bit of junk on the board. It's because I've been working on it and given up in disgust. So we're getting 20 volts, which usually infers that quite a number of things are good. But then when we strike out at this sort of 20, 20, 30 milliamp thing, it's, um, it's a little weird. could almost think it's an SMC issue. Almost. That cap there has a funny colour sheen to it, but I can't imagine anything's wrong with it. Hey JCT! Yeah, hot cap, and that's it looks like I've actually already had a shot at it. Uh, it's 653. I think that's pretty good actually for this um, board. I'll bring up the board view. What was I measuring? 653. And 0.56 volt DC, uh, diode mode. So yeah, that, that's about right. Six. It really does feel like something's just not firing off. I mean, agreeably, this looks pretty damn nasty, but we are getting our 20 volts. My probes seem big. Really? 
Hmm. I shave them down. They're already sharp enough that they will make you bleed. And that's before I get to them. Okay, that's been replaced. Any dry joints on PP bus? Nothing that would really sort of cause this kind of behavior. So someone just bought your hard drive that they need to go get data off. Two other computer places that looked at it. One had a, oh god, one had opened. That's it. Yeah, that's ruined. I mean, it's one thing if you open it, but then when you actually spin it up after you've opened it, that's usually the death. If they're lucky, Payne will be able to just you know swap the heads. Three um, M have a nice solution now. A, a liquid solution that you can put over the heads, uh, sorry, over the platters, and it will remove all the uh, impurities. It's awfully expensive stuff, but it does the job very nicely. I don't know if Payam uses that or not, but I wouldn't be surprised if they did. But it goes a long way towards you know uh, dealing with those sort of scenarios. The biggest problem usually comes in when they spin it up and something gets jammed between the head and the platter and it just sort of keeps grinding away the data, literally. Yeah, Creature, those rings around that cap filter, they're actually from uh, water. Uh, this has probably been cleaned in the past. Eight point seven is actually, I think, a little low for that rail there. It's a chunky rail, but it's a little low. We'll check that one. <clears throat> then again, maybe not. Point oh eight. That's probably. I'm going to say that's what we're going to see. Yep, 0.074. Drive had no spin, but the heads were moving. Okay, well, they were lucky then. They were very lucky. No spin. Either the motor drive... Um, yeah, the motor drive controller might have died if they're lucky. But even still... Surprised that the heads tried to move though. Unless they were trying to move out of the way. Normally, yeah, they're fail safes and things like that with the sensors on those drives so that they don't move the heads until the pl platter is actually spinning in order to ensure that there is an air cushion beneath them. I suppose it depends on the model. Hey, how's the moth? This is going in your dark world. Yeah, that SMC looks pretty good to me. You know how I feel about replacing chips that look perfectly good. It's not really something I like to do. Particularly if the machine has come in with damage. Like, if a machine has come in and you know it's had liquid damage around it, then you really shouldn't just arbitrarily replace chips simply, you know, if they don't have any sign of damage on them from the liquid or whatever. Yes, it's quite 
possible that secondary issues will occur and the chip got knocked out because of something that was damaged with the liquid damage but um, overall I still prefer to do my best to try and find another culprit before I dive into replacing an entire good looking chip bit of paint off that inductor but I don't think that's going to be an issue that's a hair across that cap there it's not a it's not a crack I'm hoping my LED ring lights will turn up soon. Well, the circuit boards for the rings. And I'm kind of hoping I'll be able to get away with the 8 LED version, but I have a suspicion I'm going to need the 16 version. And then if I do need the 16 version, I don't know whether I'm going to go with them being driven by the one driver, which can do it. The driver is capable of 350 milliamp and... I'm only going to be driving these at about 120 milliamps each. So yeah, I can do um, 240 with these. Yeah. See you, B blood. Yeah, nine times out of ten, you'll find that yeah, the liquid damage has left a mark somewhere, and you just got to find the damn thing. Like I said, we did get twenty volts restored back onto this machine, but yeah, it's it's stuck at this weird twenty milliamp state, and I'm fairly sure if I have a look at the guide, the wiki guides, it will probably say something like there is a short on the board and you're like, uh-huh. Let's actually have a look at the wiki guide. Have a look at this, we'll look at 1708. I'll just increase the font size a bit. There we go. Uh, let's see, 20 volts, not 21. No. Okay, here we go. By the way, the, you may be thinking, but Paul, you're getting 20 milliamps on there, but what I've found is that my meter will register 20 milliamps, but most of these guides are based on uh, these contraptions and these contraptions under 20 they just show zero so i'm going to assume then that this section here might actually be what i'm looking for Does this Daniel shop front remind me of why I prefer mail into private offices? Not been open long, and I've definitely already decided I'm going back to. Oh yeah, yeah. We we do everything we can here to remain away from people. Uh, we've got our front door, and then about 20 meters down, we actually have our gate, our outer fence, and then that has a padlock on it and everything. So people can't just walk up to our front door. We've had way too many close call experiences with people doing that. People just walk straight in and stuff like that. Um, the level of presumptuousness that people have, it's not through them being intentionally assholes or anything like that. They just, people just have different ideas of how far they're allowed to go into your property. So we just simply set, draw the line by having the padlock on the front gate and the doorbell out there and we'll go down to them. We don't let them come up here. And most of the time we just do mail order. Funnily enough, creature, most of the people actually suspect something's up based on our outer fence. They're like, oh, it's like a prison in there, you know, what are you keeping in there? Hey, Keith McDermott.
All right, so let's see. Check for low resistance on SM bus ground. Okay, this is the clock and data lines. I believe I did check these ones. I think, uh, let's see, they're the battery ones. SM bus, SMC. I'll just do SMC underscore five. I'll look for that. SMC underscore five. There you go. So yeah, these two, I'm fairly sure I did check it before, but we'll check them again. Will be crap just falling on my head then? Yeah, these two here, you want them to be very close together. It doesn't actually matter what value they are within reason, but they need to be close together because they are your I2C lines. So 0.42, I can see scratch marks on that. Yeah, 0.42, so they're fine. The reason why you want to check that is because if you if they're imbalanced you either have a dud SMC or something else on that I2C pair. Alright, so we go to the next thing. Check for point four in diode mode on well we did that. It's basically repeating there. If low or no voltage um no also check for 2.4 ohms on the two. Yep, yeah, done that. Huh. If the one cents. Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll double check the ISL, but I'm almost 99.9999999% sure I've checked those two, but we'll double check. Hey, Michael Chan. Uh, good thanks on yourself. Yeah, one ohm. One ohm. The slightly over one ohm bit is because of the lead resistance. One ohm. One point one one versus what's this one? Okay, good enough. And then we should have that two point four five. And then across here, similarish. So Daniel, on the positive side, I accidentally picked up two job lots of PlayStation 4 controllers. Got 50 in stock. Oh, well, okay. You actually resell those sort of things. It's not really the market I've ever been involved in. Hmm. So everything here checks out. I could try another ISL 9239. Let's check the voltage on those I2C lines and see if they are similar. It's like here for the clock and data. If there's chitter chatter on the lines, they should be sort of kind of. Well, the clock should be about half the VCC. I've been trying to learn my Chinese again. I'm going to have to start pretty much back from zero again. 3.4. Is that glitching? Okay, something's taken a hit there. See how that dives? I'm just not sure if that... I'm going to assume that was a data line. No? Alright, that's a bit suspicious. See how they both take a dive? It's like... Great stabling, you can't see it on the meter. I can see it occasionally, it will drop to like two point something, which means something is activating and dragging them down. Ah, uh, geez, do I have to bring out the oscilloscope? Oh, dear god, why? Who wants me to bring out the oscilloscope? Well, the DSO rather, not the oscilloscope. Uh. 
God, I haven't fired this thing up for like eons. You know it's going to be quicker for me to just replace that SMC. I mean, look at the look at the dust on this thing. Really, something like that. I should be pulling out the bit bus. Um, yeah, the bus pirate things like that. Bus pirate is actually a much better choice for this sort of fault. Uh, I still haven't worked out how to properly use this. But hey, Catherine. Okay, first thing we're going to do is clean it. Where the filth? Yeah, creature, I didn't... Because I used them so infrequently, and I didn't have the money on hand at the time that I got this, I didn't buy a Rigol, or a Tektronix, or a Keysight. But hey, if you want to send me a four-channel Keysight, with one gigahertz bandwidth, sure thing. You can do that. I'll even thank you. But to give you an idea how um, sort of not so great these are, you see this here? That there? That is the screen protect. Honestly, this is whoever put this together is a kindred spirit of mine because they forgot to make it that I could actually pull that out. So now it's like my iPads. Look, there's even the quality assurance sticker on the front there because it's still on the plastic. It's not the greatest scope, but it's also not the worst. Yeah. The worst of the old sound port ones I used to make back in the 1990s, early 90s. Okay, I've got to go get the probes and everything for this. I've got to find them. That's going to be the fun part. Where are they, Paul? Because I've got those PC byte probes. I just got to find them. Sure, where I'll put these things. Nice job, Paul. Nice job. Good thing you didn't need these in a hurry. I really am not sure where I'll put these things. In a safe place, of course, naturally. Always safe place. Not many places I could hide it because I've also got the base plate, the magnetic base plate that you put them on. Ow, kneecap. I don't need a kneecap, no siri, that can just crack and die. God damn it. Aha, found him.
And funnily enough, I found my bit scope as well. <sighs> Catherine, I could take it apart, yes. Okay. This is the other problem, is I don't really have the room on this bench to do this. This here is actually probably the better tool for the job, the bit scope, but I have to set up the PC for it and everything, and I've... It's, yeah. Not tonight, Satan, not tonight. This is why a lot of the time you don't even bother with scopes. It's just so much easier to simply replace the suspect part, one or both of them, whatever, and get on with your life. I don't know if I can even hold this board like this. I think what I'm going to have to do is just push these over there. Bring these over here. Well, oh, and here's the other thing: you you got to get you got to get a ground as well. So yeah, it's just a. It's such a schlep when it's not something you use every day. I suppose people are saying, well, you should use it every day, shouldn't you? Then maybe you wouldn't have so many rabbit holes. Just replace everything until it works. Yeah, so that's... I mean, like I said, I'm not... Oh, these are insulated. Yeah, okay. I can hold it like this. I will say, this cost a pretty penny to buy. Ah, shite. Got to sneeze soon. Where is it? Okay. So, SMC there. Hopefully I don't destroy anything while I'm trying to do this. So yeah, when you get technicians saying it's just not worth setting up the scope, this is why. Because in theory, yeah, it sounds great. In reality, it's... Yeah, unless you're just doing a quick single point check or something like that, but otherwise, yeah. Glasses. I need my glass to see which one's which here. I probably only really need to just probe one of them. Because whatever the fault is, it's common across both. Did I hear Momo just then? Milo, was that you? You come to save me? No. Sorry, buddy. Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to wake you up. You can get back to sleep. Gustavo, they need to be connected to the scope. Oh, I knew I was stuffing up on something. I 
I thought it was just like magic. And where the hell am I going to get my ground from? Okay. Pretty much all we're going to see is a bit of a clock signal and then it dies and resets. Bit of a clock signal, dies, resets. Let's see if this thing even still works. Oh, well, there's power. What are we going? We're going to go for red. Actually, it's picking up AC right now. Uh, yeah, I need to get a little wire just so I can grab onto some ground here. Uh, Daniel, yeah, that it is hard taking him in for that sort of thing, but it's definitely worth it afterwards. I think what, it's particularly hard, of course, with the, you know, with the girls. The boys are dead easy, you know, 24 hours and they're basically back to normal, but the girls, it's a 10 day ordeal. Okay. Yeah, a creature, these are called PC Byte or PCB ITE holders. They're quite good. The um, I would like a little more tension in uh, a little more stiffness in the holders, but I guess they sort of they've done their testing and whatever. All right, so that's up and running. I'm gonna guess we'd be all right here. Looks like my big fat face is in the way. So we have some sort of storming going on. But so I don't have a protocol module in this one. So you can see it is talking. It's trying anyway. Let's see, vertical. Okay, let's try a single sequence capture. Sorry, just got to read what's on the screen here.
Hmm. I might invert it. I'm actually not sure what it wants for the trigger. Oh, there we go. Okay, here we go. I just had to raise the trigger up so that I could catch it. Okay. Okay, you can't really see that, but... I mean, it, yeah, it looks normalish enough to me. I don't know how I can scroll left and right. Oh, cool. Okay, how far can I go? Now, I'm sure someone smart would be able to decode that. But I'm not really seeing any abnormalities in the waveform itself. So, yeah, that kind of throws out that idea. It's not syncing at the moment, it's just I did a one-shot capture, that's all. Oh, and now it does actually. Oh, right, yeah, okay. Now it's sinking because I set the trigger level. I drop it below there. It's just noise and shit. We'll try the other pin. Okay, that's got to be clock. So it seems like it's clocking for a bit and then it, yeah. It seems fairly consistent. So Crocodile, it works out to 42, does it? There are some pauses in there, but... Nah, yeah, I guess we can't really blame it. I'm not sure whether it's being spoken to or whether it's doing the talking. Yeah, that's what I was saying, creature. I don't have the I don't have a um, decode option. The only way I could do that is if I could feed this into the PC, or that's why I ended up getting yeah you know, the bit scope so that I could do that sort of thing straight into the PC. Have a look at the different buses. Uh, let's see. Have a look at the different. Um, okay, display port. So usually this here is our primary culprit for almost everything. It could be the banjo, but so many times I've replaced banjo only to have no change. It does have USB on the back, yeah. Let's see if we're getting anything on the sensors. Okay, so the very this pin here I can get to. As long as I don't f it up. Shit, shit, shit. There's bridging stuff there. Okay, we've got... It appears we have no activity on SM bus SMC1. 
to have a look at the schematics this year. I'm pretty sure that's the damn pin on. I am on. Let's try again just to be sure. I need a freaking microscope here. Hey, Dad, fix it. Yeah, I'm on it. This is how I know I'm on it. Took a photo of it and I can see it. <laughs> All right, so we've got no clocked activity, but also what's interesting here is it's not been pulled up. That should, at rest, be up high. So like this here, 3651, oh damn it, not you, go out of, get out of here. So it's like we don't have a 3v3 SO, maybe. What we'll do is we'll check this one here, 5360, which is the one right next to it, and see if the same thing applies. But yeah, that should definitely be up high. Um, I might just reset... Oh, frick, got the phone. Yep, no change there. We definitely got that current running. So we could be missing 3v3 or so. Definitely nothing there. But I actually thought the other buses were also pulled up by 3v3 or so. So let's have a look. This one here. Ah, uh, no, this is 3v3 G3 hot. But this is 3v3 or so. Uh, I think that's going to be what it is. Or at least that's the starting point. And I, let's see, 3v3SO. So many places I can... Funnily enough, no actual test points. Yeah, it would just be easy for me to measure it. Let's see, I can pick these ones up here. This cluster here is all... Well, get out of here, bug. Multimeter. Hey, Gustavo, yeah, I changed the desktop environment for the, uh, shit, 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 the window manager. Uh, it is the desktop environment too. Okay, so all of these. Yeah, we do not have 3v3 SO. Okay. Finally, we can put this damn thing to rest. I could have saved myself all that drama if I had actually done what you're supposed to do with a lot of these situations, and that is measure the rails. <laughs> Creature, maybe you would find this sort of thing quite handy. Like I said, it works well on... I can sort of touch down onto things as small as 0 for 0 2, even 0 2 0 1s. But it obviously is better with test points. Okay. Alright, so we've got to find 3v3 or so. Back in the cover for the next 10 years? Absolutely, yes. Mm. 
And here we go, this is what we want. I guess the first thing to do is see if we have 3v3s5. So we have a look at U80 220. And interestingly enough, that is actually in the damage area. So it's this chip here, the blue glass one. I do recall having replaced that though. Anyway, we'll power it up and test the voltages. The big risk with that sort of probe setup creature is, of course, as you can expect, just accidentally tapping it and stuff like that. You know, and okay, 3v3s5 it should be up here. We definitely have 3v3s5. And 3v3so a1b1c1. There's a big fat whoops resistor up here, and we definitely don't have it there. Okay, now the thing is, is this action being told to send that connection through? And for that, we have the PM enable 3v3SO line, which naturally has absolutely no, it's this tiny little nub on the side there. So we have to go to wherever it's been generated, which is over here. Okay, and the test point for this is that one there. We are not getting an enable request. Okay, so it's not the... Okay, so the question is why aren't we getting the enable request? What is U7850? Okay, so that, so now we've, okay, so what is this, this uh, Schmidt or That's interesting, I've never actually seen them draw it like that. Basically, it's a noise tolerant OR gate. Now, these Schmidt lines here, or hysteresis uh, indicators, it means essentially that it's not going to trigger unless it gets above a certain threshold and then it's not going to untrigger unless it drops back below a certain threshold as opposed to sort of having a more um, sensitive noisy thresholds like normal ones yeah 3v3s5 was present yes let's go back to quad display it's easier this way so we'll check 7850 huh? U7850, where are you? Up. Uh, that's weird. Why didn't that pick that up? Anyway, we'll check. We have 3v3s5 there. We did have 3v3s5 elsewhere on the board. And yeah, we do have 3v3s5. Now we check our inputs. So six and one. Classic. Okay, we'll check one, which is the probe point. That's zero. Okay, we're back to that SMC again. And we do have a test point way over here, which is that one there. And yep, that's zero as well. Crap. Okay, so they're both zero, which now we've got to work out why. P 
PM enable 1v8SA, PM enable 1v8SA. Okay, so we've got an AND gate down here. PM enable 3v3SA, PM enable. Okay, so this actually feeds into here. That's funny. And then that feeds out of there and goes into here. It's kind of like a. Um, I'm, I was going to say a flip flop, but it's not. Which means probably PM Sleep S3L is our problem. We'll probably find PM Sleep S3L is actually high some on the board. And interesting enough, it's the test point right next to the other one. Let me guess, you're going to be high? You're not. Okay, now it's getting weird. Oh yeah, it makes sense that you wouldn't be high. Okay, so it's low. We're missing PM Sleep S3L. Now, question is, where does it come from? Hopefully not the CPU. Yeah, Schmidt Ore. I've never I've never seen a Schmidt or or Schmidt input or but yeah that's what it looks like to me and a Schmidt input and seven four AUP one T ninety seven GM so I'm guessing the seven four AUP series is the Schmidt ones it's kind of weird anyway. Uh, right, yeah, so PM Sleep S3L, we've got to find out who's generating that. It looks like we've got an active pull down of 100k to ground, so that makes sense. And straight away, it's coming out of U0500, which is the SMC. Oh no, PCH, oh, we're fucked. So for some reason the PCH is not telling it to turn on. Or rather not to um, get out of S3 state. <sighs> so we've got S5, we've probably got S4, oh, check S4. Well we don't know, this is where the problem comes in, is we don't know actually what prerequisites are required for going from S5 through to S3 which essentially would take you to SO so it could be that it's I'm going to say PM Sleep S4L is also missing because it's such a traditional thing to do Which one are you? One, two, three, four. Yeah, S four L is missing. So S three is probably okay, but S four L is our problem. Again, active pull down. I'll have a look at SMC, BC, OC, OK. And SMC, LID. Yeah, we'll have a look at the SMC, LID behavior. Could be something as dumb as that. I doubt it. You never know.
That's some weird floaty voltage, that one. We've definitely got power. 6.2. Yeah, you'd expect that to be pretty much zero, not that weirdness. So we want them to be high. So 52, 52. Where's the right one? Okay, yeah, so that's high. And that's just weird. What have we mentioned there? SMC TX. Oh, no, that's not it. <clears throat> More to the point. Okay, this is being powered by G3 Hot, so we definitely should have power to that. Lid open is that one there in between the two resistor packs. Three point four. So we are getting a valid value out there. So um, we have our 3.4, so as far as it can tell, the lid is open, so that's not inhibiting it. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, I was going to look at SMC ACB. Uh, yeah, AC OK. AC OK. See fourth down. Yep, it's happy with that. Let's see if we've got a sus acknowledge. Okay, that's fine, yeah. It's acknowledge on low. Okay, see if it thinks the CPU is too hot. Nope. Oh wait, 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 wait. Yeah, that if that's low, it thinks it's hot. But then that might be, it probably hasn't come into play yet though because of the fact that it, we're not even at that state where it's even started the machine so it's not going to be doing anything with that. Okay, let's check SMC on off L. Oh god damn it, I hate it when I do that. On FL. Well, it's not being pulled into. Re yeah, it's not like the button's being held down, so it's fine with that.
They got a creature. Hey, uh, Tony, I think he was around earlier. That is a weird place for that. Yeah, that's good. That there's the filter that basically sends power to the SMC. Well, part of it anyway. Starting to drive me a bit insane. One of those sort of faults where it should have been an easy one because, well, comparatively easy because it's like, hey, it's just a on off or corrosion fault, but no siree. Couldn't be that easy. I kind of wonder whether I should throw it into the ultrasonic. Okay, so we're getting out 20 volts, so that mostly sort of eliminates all this stuff. I'll put it into a chassis, see if it actually charges. If it charges, then the, for the most part eliminates the ISL. Oh, someone forgot to turn on the filter. Just have to get my chassis for the 1708. Some mangy bastard's already taken it. So twenty one fifty nine, twenty one seventy nine, nineteen ninety. Where the hell's my seventeen oh eight? Don't tell me that's you. Oh no, you're just the bull. <laughs> you're the original one. Alright, just talking to myself. Expert opinion and all that crap. Oh, noisy. Big trouble now. Yeah, you need to go into the queue slot. You shouldn't have been out and about on your own. Aha, uh -huh, 17 of it. some problems you're know, talking to yourself but could also be a sign of impending madness Andrew yeah it was originally I believe ultrasonic and then all the repair work was done to it to get 20 volts back but it wasn't enough
No, I haven't got display on this one. I need the damned screw. Just gotta remember that this is not for my machine, this is for the customer's machine. Open up the lid and see what happens. Ah, oh, crap. Kind of helps if you plug the battery flex, data flex in. Not a lot happens if you don't do that. Yeah, uh, so we're getting yeah, 20 volts, but no change on that. That's interesting. I uh, don't, we obviously at the point where it isn't yet ready to charge or. I don't know, what, I would have thought that it would charge even at an S5 state. Unless it's a shonky battery, but no, I don't think so. Pretty sure this one works. Uh, Tony, it's, it's only nine months old, that one. So it's still well within the should work phase. <coughs> And it wasn't made in Britain, so it shouldn't catch on fire when I use it. Daniel, customers can be the absolute worst, can't they? Yes, I completely sympathise. The overall feel I get with this fault is that one of the signal lines has been pulled low. No, oh, I shouldn't say being pulled low. One of the signal lines is possibly missing, which is causing it to stay in some kind of paused, not go anything further state. I mean, I could try to change the ISL again. I'm very disinclined to try to change the SMC, though. At least the ISL is pretty quick and easy. But um, I'm kind of surprised if it is the ISL, because normally you don't believe you get 20 volts unless you've got an ISL that's kind of working. Yeah, not enough current for the infrared, unfortunately. Not enough power, rather. So, I mean, 20 milliamps at 20 volts, yeah, what's that, 400 milliwatts? Yeah, you know, it could show up. Well, can't hurt. It might show up, but I don't know how well it will show up amongst the noise. At least we haven't used any really hot stuff tonight. So the bench itself should be pretty quiet, as it were. What? Why are you not giving me a terminal now? Okay. Okay, let's plug it in. There are just so many reflections on this board. 
Okay, the one thing you can see is the uh, what do you call it? CD3215 warming up accordingly. That one there. There is a little bit of a reflection over here, but I'm not sure if it's actually something or whether it's a lie. Looks like it's probably just a reflective lie. But yeah, certainly the CD3215 is warming up. Nothing really else showing up anywhere. It's an absolutely incy bincy tiny bit of warmth picked up over here, but it could have just been pure transitional. Okay, let's try this side. Ach, niemand. Don't do that. That is a reflection, I dare say. Yep. Overall, this kind of blooming that you can see over here, I really need to get a white one of these. Um, this kind of blooming of the signal it sort of indicates that's where the warm yeah the heat is coming from i'll just put it into maximum okay It's kind of weird that it's focusing on that um, on the Thunderbolt chip just there. Just trying to see if it's just a reflection. See if I can mount this up higher. Funnily enough, I have in times turned off all the lights and it still doesn't make any difference. Well, okay, it, it does help a little bit, but overall, because the room itself, because we're dealing in room temperatures here at the moment, the radiosity back off the walls kind of make it moot. You still end up with all the reflections. Yeah, there's this fraction of darkness over here. A 
Unfortunately, freeze can really doesn't work out so well around here because, the f yeah, we're 25, 26 ambient here. I'm just going to flip it over. So all we've got is that CD 3215 warming up and I'm pretty sure the same will happen when I switch to the different port. Yeah, you can see the other one's getting warm now. So at least they're following a predictable pattern. Uh, Tony, I don't think so. I think it's because I just haven't set up permissions to that particular device. The FLIR system is, yeah, because this is not actually proper software, I'm kind of bodging my way through a lot of things in the system. I really cannot see anything. I don't even know where the, I'm pretty sure like 20 milliamps, 20 volts, it's 400 milliwatts. It's not an insignificant amount of heat, I should note though, because if you get a single cap or something like that, that is shorted with, well, down to about 100 milliwatts, it will pick it up. But when it's just sort of like arbitrarily distributed across the board, then yeah, it's quite difficult to find it. Top left one red dot. I think that might be reflection. Between big chip and long cover. Oh, uh, uh, right, no, that's a reflection. That's the, this here. That there is actually, what you're seeing is a reflection of that there. You notice how that's offset? See, so we align them and all of a sudden it's on top of the crystal. Unfortunately, because we're working at such close distances here, the parallax error is quite severe. So you sort of have to readjust every time you want to focus on something new. One thing's for sure is we're not getting any pulsing sort of activity. I think the board is just, it's not a power short as such. Rather, it's just a case of some signal is lost somewhere. And it's not telling the machine to turn on. The question is, is it a lost signal due to the liquid damage that was in this area? Or is it a lost signal due to a chip failure? And then you get this sort of weird behavior down here, but I think it's like what we're seeing down here is 
probably actually reflections of the test points. Yeah, the only thing working sort of normally is the 3215s. Bit of a pain. And it's what, 2 o'clock in the morning? Yeah, it's probably time for me to wrap it up and try and attack this again tomorrow. So yeah, my, my guess is it's likely one of the prerequisites are missing, but you know, I genuinely don't think it's the 32, uh, 9239 chip, the ISL. Mostly because I'm fairly sure I've actually already replaced that too. Whoops, stop slamming people's stuff around, gee whiz. Yeah, because I can see an ISL in here. Yep, and I don't think that one was even faulty in the first place. And we've changed the we've changed the um, PI thirty two USB, and of course the CD thirty two fifteen. Yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe I wonder if it's possible for the CD thirty two fifteens to get up to twenty volts. You know that sequence of power. And then it still doesn't get communicated that they have 20 volts on hand. I even changed the actual USB ports. Yeah, it's got me stumped for the moment. Hey, Gavin Brown. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm also leaving. So yeah, I've just got to think why we wouldn't be getting those uh, elevated states. You know, SMC is a possible candidate, and it's probably it's a lesser complication to replace the SMC than it is to replace this um, banjo chip. I think it's a banjo, was it? Anyway, um, even though that chip is actually like it's just a um, QFP I would prefer to replace the SMC these QFPs the high density ones like that they're a major pain in the backside to swap over oh. all right I give up again for tonight at least we tested the USB-C routing on the new board so that was good to see that worked so I haven't completely wrecked my future boards I hope and well, we bought out the DSO, which is very unusual for me. Like I said, it's more of a status symbol, a very poor status symbol at that. But really, I mean, a DSO, you rarely use them for this sort of work. And what else did we fix up tonight? I think nothing. Oh, the software. We found the memory leak in the software, so that was good. Now at least I can leave that USB-C meter running constantly because I was wondering what was going on before it would I'd come back after being away for lunch or something like that and my USB-C meter would just have vanished and now I know why it's because it was leaking memory everywhere kind of like my brain's falling out right now so I'm out of here thanks all for watching hopefully we can have some better luck tomorrow until then you take care I'll see you later